What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and we've got the article. All right, the article, Tim Pool's reporter, Shane Cashman, part one of two, genius Griff Timmy, appreciate that, on uh, Eliza Blue, Perpetual Trauma Machine, part one. And uh, a lot of people, I have not read it. Uh, my reactions are in real time. I'm not going to read the whole thing word for word because whether or not I agree or disagree with it, you know, I, I don't want to rob Shane of the traffic or Tim of the traffic. So I think, you know, that's reasonable. And I will share the actual article, not the archive, because I don't suspect Timmy would be up to any weird shenanigans. On what we talk about, we talk about all sorts of things. Okay. So on January 24th, 2023, members of the Science Security Board pulled the black hood off the doomsday clock to reveal a humanity, um, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to, you know, all the exposition I'm not going to read. I was thinking about all this doom when... Eliza Blue called me on the same day those scientists pushed the hands toward the symbolic clock closer to midnight. She had been trending on Twitter. Eliza and the Doomsday Clock don't really have anything to do with each other, but they are symbol symbolically connected in my mind. The end of the world is always upon us. These days it can feel like a personal destruction is the end of the world. And the others day is the end of the world is some distant thought that has nothing to do with us. But in that moment, she was trending on Twitter for claims of lying about being traffic censoring critics with the help of Elon Musk. It felt like this was a personal doomsday scenario for Eliza. Over the past few months, I had a strange opportunity to speak with people at the exact moment when they were trending on Twitter. They were trending for anything but being totally positive. Trends typically bring waves of hate and posturing ruthless criticism. This can have a positive or negative effect depending on the target. Whether I was talking to Ye or Carrie Lake or Eliza Blue, I was, it was surprising to me that despite the doom attached to their names, especially in digital spaces, each of them remained oddly hopeful. I couldn't tell if it was part was faith or part of it trying to convince themselves everything was okay, or perhaps a bit of both. Now, I'm not going to talk. He goes through the history here. It looks like about EB. I don't really care. We all know. Um, you know, before her story was put into question, she seemed like one of the rare people on Twitter around whom various political factions could rally. It was hard to argue against what she was most vocal about, saving people from the perils of terrible things. Now, her pinned tweet still about, you know, the reminder about Twitter refusing to remove something. But by the time she was trending and the doomsday clock ticked forward, it was because people who initially championed her were now calling her out that believed her to be outright lies of her survivor story. They feared they not only she'd not only lied, but she was also profiting off other victims. If you Google her name as of today's publication, you will see many articles that were putting her life story into question from the post millennial to unheard to Daily Beast. There's been a thread making the rounds on Twitter, probably, uh, that broke down all the inconsistencies in her timeline. The thread was so damaging, it even called into question her own age. Many users were enraged that they had helped her give her a platform, only to find out she'd seemingly made up her whole story. These accusations reminded me of Don Draper from Mad Men, a story of stolen valor. A weak soldier steals the identity of another soldier who'd actually died in battle, and it was as if she'd shed her skin and now Twitter had finally exposed her. They pointed to a long list of aliases she's over to use. She's been Eliza Cut, Sipe knows. Her legal name is Morthland. At face value, her identity seemed like a constant mutation. This feels like a big buildup to then saying, but they were all wrong. But I'm going into this good faith. Internet sleuths found at times she had been seen on TV or in public videos or modeling campaigns, calling into question her timeline of having been um, on the receiving end of trafficking. If she's done all these shows, many Twitter users said she must have only been in it for fame. Everything seemed like a lie. The initial thread culminated in the internet scouring the internet for as much information as possible to prove in fact she was a fraud. Eventually, the thread attracted those who were once extremely supportive of her for her cause. Larger accounts shared the images from the video with her bare rear and some questions regarding the validity of her story. They tagged her and wanted a response. It seemed like everyone was waiting. But the initial response was that these larger accounts were suspended. It's weird that they, he's going out of his way to not mention anybody, but that's okay. I don't need clout from this. I really don't care. Really, it was Brittany Venti who popped it all off. Um, the narrative switched from Eliza Blue's been lying this whole time to she's using her contacts within Twitter to censor critics. Eliza says she would die on the hill of free speech, yet a move that seemed to many like it was not only clear censorship, but more of a sinister insight into how Twitter 2.0 was with Elon Helms operating the same bad faith favors for friends was Elon dishing up personal help. If she was behind the suspensions, then she was an outright hypocrite. A lot of us were worried about how sharing 
something in the digital public square, something that seemed publicly available, could result in a suspension or ban. The anti-establishment minded on Twitter, who had been reluctantly rejoicing as Elon acquired the platform, now having flashbacks of what Jack Dorsey felt like. Whether, um, another digital landscape mon monopolized by tech elites who ruled subjectively. For the record, I don't agree with Musk's bans of people like Ye or Alex. I truly believe in amnesty. Good for you, bud. Um, no, like legitimately, unsarcastically. As soon as the bans happened, the rumors started to spread. She must have been sleeping with Elon. She was a secret shadow inside of, uh, inside of Twitter, detect, dictating terms of service. And now I was on the phone with her. I had previously planned to write a profile on Eliza, and we happened to be discussing to, a time to schedule a, plizit, a visit to Quad Cities. I heard the parts of the story she shared in various podcasts, and I saw an opportunity to share an in-depth understanding what happened in her life. Now that her entire story had been picked apart in the Twitter sphere, it was safe to say I had more questions than I bargained for. Eliza and I had met in person once previously, of course on Timcast, fine, put that out there. I told her on the live show that I was suspicious of the Me Too movement and that way it infiltrated and destroyed accusations of merit. I believe that it was oversaturated the culture with false accusations. I believe the same, the same horrific people were taken down by that movement and that's a positive, but there was an insidious fallout where any whiff of accusation without any due diligence could destroy a person. It was absurd to see the court of public opinion be swayed so easily by just a few accusations with zero proof. Um, so let's skip down here. I don't, you know. Uh, all right. It was the way that Eliza responded to the text. Oh, wait, sorry. I just left Ye's place in LA. He had, and I had spent the weekend discussing, among other things, the shape of his campaign for the president. One topic he kept coming back to was trafficking. Eliza's name popped in my head. So when I was at the airport, I asked for her permission to send her contact to Ye. Hmm. I'm sure she obliged. Then Ye started a group chat. It was the way that Eliza responded to the initial text from Ye that gave me pause to go full tilt into accusing her of solely, of operating solely out of fame. I still didn't know her personality at all, nor did I expect recent claims, but I think it's worth sharing this despite. Ye, Eliza got your number from Shane's, from Shane. Let's stop all this stuff on Twitter. Eliza says... Um, the actual freedom of all the people is the most important fight. No pu public stunt, by the way, and I'm not going to ask for funding or anything. I do everything on my own with my old iPhone and God. Um, I don't think that that's very convincing. That just seems like this is, you know, that's just manipulative to me. But anyway, um, you know, there, it was discussed on Timcast that I would write a profile. Okay, good enough. There's a small collection of some of the criticism I received as I prepared the, the profile. This is a litmus test for Shane Cashman. He has a not goblin. I'm not going to read all that. Um, I'm going to skip down here. Okay. By the night that Eliza and I were both on IRL, I had already been in talks with Andrew Tate to write a profile on him. I'd spoken with him directly in the days leading up to the arrest, perhaps saying, oh, this guy's well-connected. Um, but after the thread about her life went viral, her timeline didn't make sense to me either. There seemed to be major gaps in her story. I'm sure I wasn't alone having this nightmarish thought experiment. On one hand, I would have preferred she was lying from the bits about her own story that she had shared. I'd rather that not happen to anyone. On the other hand, if she was lying, I'd feel personally let down. Uh, I don't believe she had a race advocacy to see her own do on Twitter and podcasts even if I struggle with it. But again, the current economy deals in the currency of victimhood, and we're all numb to the grift. And now we were supposedly on the edge of nuclear annihilation. I had questions, and she promised I could ask anything. It seemed like I was flying to Illinois to interrogate someone about their darkest lies or someone could have their darkest experiences to go through. My goal was to establish a timeline for her words and then cross-reference it with the timeline that featured in the thread I th I'm not sure what thread he's talking about. Um, it's, I don't think it's mine because I never brought up her age. Um, so either Eliza's built an elaborate story for profit or she was telling the truth and we all got the whole thing wrong. Neither seemed to be an easy answer. My distrust points in all directions. Either she was a juicy sommelier of anti-establishment Twitter or somehow all of anti-establishment Twitter had become the juicy sommelier of victim blaming. I didn't really like the process any way you cut it. Okay, I kind of had to stop. I had to pause there for a second because I, I, this is a very long article. Um, I, I'm still not, you know, I had to pause it and finish reading it because it was just like, I, this is going to be a 45-minute video. 
here's a point. Here's here's the only part of it, of real substance here. Okay, and it's point. It's important to point out that it's part one. So if Shane Cashin decides that he's going to now dig into whether or not these things happened in in part two, um, that would be something. But uh, in my interpretation of this right now is it's an extremely wordy, very well written, simple word for word regurgitation of what she wanted us to know. That's what this is. Um, and it's actually a little bit, it's really painting her in a positive light. Uh, if, if, I mean, like it doesn't acknowledge like a single lie. It's just like, Hey, I asked her this and this is what she said. So she just replatformed her to kind of, uh, tell the same story unless I'm missing something. Um, you know, she showed up in her Tesla gear. It was all given to me by a friend. He worked for Tesla. Um, she was looking at her phone. The Babylon Bee had notified her that they canceled an event they had planned to do together. Uh, that's interesting. So the Babylon B uh, canceled. That's a nugget. It was heartbreaking. She said, I need my Christian brothers. I'm so pissed that they would cancel. She had a slightly darker tone in her voice than she had earlier when we spoke. Well, I guess I'm the guy that talks to people the rest of society rejects. In a case, that's you right now, Twitter. There was mostly small talk on the way to get food. We discussed our childhood, being homeschooled, blah, 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 blah. We took our seats at the truck stop diner. I was alerted by colleagues via text that some people had announced their father's personal address. I don't like that. I disavow that anyway, 100%. Both home and office were claiming to be on their way to film the location. I was going to be staying at her parents' house for the duration of my visit. Are you reading Twitter, I asked. Um, everyone who's ever done I don't like that. I, I disavow that. Her dad has nothing to do with this, as far as I could tell. And even if she is a you know a liar, there's no point in putting her address out there unless you're going to serve her legal paper paperwork. Um, friends are telling me that silence makes everything worse right now. I don't. So it's essentially in this article, she just reiterates the same thing she's always said online about being groomed or whatever. It's all nebula nebulous, and she still does not name anybody. Again, I don't buy this. I'm afraid of them. Name them so they can stop. You know, name them so they can stop taking advantage of other people. You know, like I, I acknowledge that, like, obviously she's had some issues in her life. She's done some stuff like that. She had some, you know, I totally buy that she was, uh, you know, addicted and did this kind of stuff and did films she didn't want to do. Um, you know, but like, you know, allegedly ODing again, like, I'm not denying that this woman had a hard life, uh, but certainly her timeline looks very suspect. Very suspect. Um, you know, addiction leads you to doing all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't have normally done, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you were quote unquote trafficked. You certainly can have, um, uh, you know, a situation where you're just making bad decisions and now you're looking back and you're trying to blame everyone else for your own bad decisions. You know, this, you know, yeah, so you won't name names. Can you say it's, it's a famous person, I asked? There are many people involved in my story that are very high profile. Maybe they aren't a household name, but I think if it all comes out, people will be like, oh, wow. You go back to him and you see him after the phone call I asked. I said, I didn't physically, I just called him. So, I mean, like, again, she, refu she refuses to name names. Um, she, she basically tries to run cover for any connections at, um, at uh, Twitter or that, you know, distance herself from Elon. I'm um, saying that she's never met with him. Um, I don't buy this that she's like hooking up with everybody. I mean, it's a, like a meme. Like, I don't think her and Tim did anything. I don't think her and Elon did anything. Um, I, you know, it, it's interesting to me uh, how this all, this is certainly a puff piece. The comments are, you know, the, the comments on here says, there's a long-winded fluff piece. Um, there's absolutely no substance to anything in this article except regurgitated stories. Uh, I did a quick search for Venti, Brittany, Jeremy Corden. None of them showed up. But that could be in part two. The article is mostly pointless. It's also a pointless word fluff count to relate two non-relatable stories and proceeds to droll on with a softball-laden conversation uh, that gives Eliza all the elbow room in the world to BS more without any evidence. Yeah, this... Not what... You know, either everything she said is true or part two is going to be absolute an absolute bombshell. I suppose we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Um, if you haven't yet, please do uh, subscribe. Wherever you're watching my content, look, I can tell you, if you made it this far in this video and you still aren't subscribed, um, 
you know, look, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Um, you know, and I, the one thing that I try to do is own them. Um, certainly if I'm wrong about all this stuff and Eliza's hundred percent right and hasn't lied about a thing, I would be shocked given how all of her, none of her timelines line up. But, um, I appreciate all of your support and hope that you'll share this video. This uh, article is not good.